world has changed. Because of this, our learners will need a different set of skills to thrive and be successful. It is in our hands as educators to create innovative teaching and learning experiences that will prepare the youth for all the uncertainties that lay ahead. Whether it's for classroom, distance, or blended learning, we at DIWA are committed to help you create innovative teaching and learning experiences with DIWA 5G. Let's explore DIWA 5G! DIWA 5G is designed to provide students with rich learning experiences. DIWA 5G inspires educators to be creative and productive, amplifying the power of schools to change lives. DIWA 5G textbooks provide a clear roadmap for grade and subject-specific learning goals. They are designed to give teachers and students clarity on key concepts and core ideas through structured content, enhanced interactive features, and additional resources. And to help teachers with their synchronous and asynchronous classes, DIWA 5G textbooks include the Teacher's Guide, a modular approach to flexible learning delivery, a tool that contains teaching instructions and student assessments for online and offline learning delivery. Next up, DIWA 5G magazines are Supplemental Educational Magazines or SEMS. They are as informative as textbooks but are more appealing and less intimidating to students because of their format and their capability to deliver manageable chunks of information that result in higher knowledge retention. With enhanced accessibility and enriched interactivity, these educational magazines help learners develop new ideas and conduct profound investigations. We also have DIWA 5G Systems, which is genuine e-learning, a complete and safe learning management system. It is loaded with interactive multimedia content and equipped with collaboration tools and the robust support service that meet the changing education ecosystem and its stakeholders. And lastly, DIWA 5G Assessment is Checkbox. To ensure the integrity of learning continuity, DIWA's online gamified assessment portal makes possible a productive exchange of instructional feedback between teachers and students. With ready-made and customized drills and activities found in the platform, DIWA 5G Assessment helps students achieve mastery in different subject areas while keeping them excited and interested. All of these DIWA 5G educational resources make richer teaching and learning experiences because of these five qualities. Engaging. Flexible. Accessible Enriching And Relevant That's the 5G. 5G Education Evolve With Cleves Publishing Incorporated, we assure you as our partners to be there throughout the journey. We are with you in every step of the way. Technology is continuously evolving and Cleves is riding with it. From print to digital, Cleves got you covered with the products that we offer. Spearheading Cleves products are the Cleaflets, an e-learning portal for teachers only and the Leveraging Education, Augmenting the Future, or LEAF, for student-teacher access. For teachers, administrators, and school owners, 
we have the Cleese Shares. It is perfect for you in maneuvering fast-paced demands of the education field as we collaborate in creating a balanced amalgam of theories, pedagogies, and practices inside and outside of the realm of the learning environments. Reimagine, reinforce, recognize, to make quality education through a variety of lectures, trainings, and webinars in aid of instruction, classroom management, and institution management. These offerings are perfect responses. In connection to Cleves Shares, to provide service beyond sales, Cleves also has the Cleves Cares for its partner mission schools in providing them with capacity building focused branding or rebranding the institution inside and out. It also practices reimagining various school scenarios and responses to the needs of the time, reinforcing school climate and culture through different webinars conducted among institution partners and in recognizing the value of each stakeholder in the success of value-laden instruction delivery. Another product of Cleves is the Cleves Assist. This offering features a 24-7 hotline for technical assistance in the use and maintenance of the Cleaflets and Leaf. Almost everyone in the academe can benefit from this, from the teachers, admins, and school owners to the students and parents. Cleaves Assists aims to provide an assistance response team to address immediate technical concerns while ensuring the users the full utilization of the Cleaflets and Leaf. It also offers visits with partners to address offline concerns when needed. We ensure quality service delivered through this hotline assistance to our partners, always. And lastly, Cleaves Thinks. Together with the partners, we provide them with external consultations for present and future research agenda, accreditation certification, and imaging one. Cleaves thinks that with a client in full swing, it is redirecting the winds within their institutions. Cleaves thinks is for teachers, administrators, school owners, students, parents, and even extended service communities and collaborative partner agencies. Through innovative designs, proactive responses, and reconfigured goals, established institutions are on the verge of the fourth going to the fifth industrial revolution. Strong definitive vision is what's needed in remaining relevant and competent in this world. And this is what Cleves is all about. Welcome to your own unlimited learning ecosystem created by Odilo. Everyone learns differently, and today, more than ever, educators need to provide differentiated and adaptive learning. This personalization should speak to a learner's needs, skills, and interests, and intelligent learning solutions have become a must-have for education institutions. To solve the Blooms to Sigma problem, schools and parents must put the learner at the heart of the technology tools that enable one-on-one -on -one learning. Odilo uses data-driven, artificial intelligence-powered solutions to offer a personalized experience and unlimited learning possibilities. This is what we call an unlimited learning ecosystem. Every institution that works with Odilo uses our integrated technology to create unlimited learning opportunities and to provide intelligent Netflix-style experiences that are tailored to the learner and increase engagement. We have demonstrated impact in improving reading and writing habits by three to five times. We offer unified and frictionless access to more than three million multimedia titles, ebooks, videos, audiobooks, courses, podcasts, magazines, textbooks, newspapers, and more. Over three million titles from the best publishers all around the world, so you have all ebooks and learning resources you need in one place. And thanks to our flexible lending models, families can save up to 90% on buying physical titles with Odilo. 
Educators can create personalized learning experiences to address individual students' learning gaps by combining the multimedia titles with their own content resources and incorporate assessments at different parts of the learning experience. Odilo gives you the ability to fuse assessments for learning, assessments of learning, and assessments as learning through the learning paths and learning clubs that encourage collaborative and group learning. Our mission is to democratize quality educational content and provide personalized platforms for schools, making sure that every learning journey will become unique with a frictionless user experience. We are trusted by more than 146 million users in more than 40 countries around the world. More than 6,000 institutions already have their own unlimited learning ecosystem. What about you? With the new normal, the digital transformation process has accelerated and is challenging the educational system. Families more than ever need the online learning process to be easy and exciting, available to them 24-7, and need instant access to thousands of digital content resources. Welcome to your new partner that is not only helping schools support families better, but creating new opportunities to make learning even more collaborative and personalized. Introducing your school's own unlimited learning ecosystem, powered by Odillo. We are the world's first organization that integrates seamlessly with technology, AI, content from thousands of the best providers, and intelligent learning services, so that each school can promote a culture of unlimited learning possibilities and collaboration the way you want it. Imagine having your own unlimited learning ecosystem with your own branding that personalizes content for each user, that enables families to share access at home, that brings the class together online to learn different things in a structured and an interactive way. On top of this, as it's fully customized, your schools can be specifically promoting the values and learning initiatives that are most important to you. Exciting, right? We think so. We have even proven to increase reading habits by five and reduce the barriers to learning with the benefit of both online, offline access as well as inclusive features so no one is left behind. So, what is in your own unlimited learning ecosystem? Your own branding, a personalized experience, access to the best multimedia content from over 3 million titles and also your own, interactive reading and writing clubs, learning intelligence, first-class support from a learning coach and a team. We also have worked hard to empower both teachers and families. Both will have access to not only the content, but lots of learning intelligence to provide more support for their students. And unlike others, we are truly multimedia. Ebooks, videos, audiobooks, courses, podcasts, and we have access to over 3 million multimedia titles from over 5,000 of the world's best providers. This way, we can ensure we support learners of all abilities and preferences. And thanks to our flexible loan models, families can have unlimited access to great content. Today, more than 140 million users in almost 50 countries around the world trust Odillo and have been able to make a difference. Be ahead of the curve and amplify your community's learning possibilities by building an unlimited learning ecosystem for your school today. Um, today's session will um, be handled by the Administrative uh, Services Committee. But before we begin to facilitate today's session, we would like to um, remind you 
of uh, some norms for our September 18 session. All right, so um, these are the reminders. For easier acknowledgement, please change your Zoom display name with the following format, school name underscore full name. For example, Manila Cathedral School underscore Juan de la Cruz. Second, Please ensure that your microphone starts on mute. Always keep muted except when you want to ask questions or you are asked to speak. This will prevent background noise from disrupting the proceedings. Third reminder, if your camera is on, please be aware of your movements. Turn your camera off if you intend to leave or stand up for a while. The, uh, well, the, the, the General Assembly will not be possible, but I will have to read this first, okay? So, all right, so let, uh, we'll have a, 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 we have a virtual photo booth, and uh, this is an exi exciting part in the General Assembly. So even for today's session, please take a selfie and then win, no? and this is the mechanics. So... Uh, we begin uh, with, with a disclaimer. You must be a school personnel and students of CAP and CR member schools. You are in agreement that CAP and CR is authorized to handle the posting of pictures on any of the CAP and CR's uh, social media networks. And uh, you must be on public account at the time that uh, the entry is submitted for the contest. So this is how you will do it. Uh, before the start of the program or the, during the session breaks, the moderator and MC will announce the schedule of the selfie time. For this particular session, the selfie time will be after the awarding of the certificates to our uh, the, the, the awarding of certificate to our uh, esteemed resource person. Okay, and then the link will be posted in the Zoom chat box and Facebook Live comment section where you can. Uh, upload your selfie. So you take a selfie with the MC or speaker on the computer screen, and then ask your friends, relatives to like and follow the official CAP NCR Facebook page. The link is on the screen and subscribe to CAP NCR official YouTube channel. It's also on the screen. And then once you upload your picture on Facebook, Please use the following hashtags, hashtag CAPNCR and hashtag CNGA2021. All right. Now, there will be a verification process to be done by a DTI of uh, CAP NCR, Meron Kaming Sariling uh, Department of Trade and Industry, just to check if you are following and you have subscribed to the official CAP NCR's uh, Facebook page and YouTube channel. Now, this will be done by the Secretariat and the Steering Com. Your, you, your, once you have been verified, your name will be endorsed, and then we will pick one winner per day. So there's going to be one winner for this uh, uh, session. And then we will post the name of the winner in the official CAP NCR Facebook page. And of course, the Secretariat will communicate with the winner to how to claim the 1,000 worth of Gcash, all right? Now, uh, before we officially begin, uh, the assembly would not be possible without our sponsors. So we begin with Alam nyo ngayon, nasa Olympic uh, gold medal standing ng ating mga sponsors. For our gold sponsors, we have Diwa, Odilo, palak pa kayo, Vival Group of Companies, <coughs> Cliffs, Aviva Publishing House Incorporated, 
Don Bosco Press, our silver sponsors, Phoenix Publishing House, Techno Kids, Rex Education, the Inteligente Publishing Incorporated, Seeds Publishing House, Vicarish Publication and Trading Incorporated, and Tech Factors Incorporated. For our bronze sponsors, we have Johnny and Hansel Publications, Dream Books, Excelandia IT Services. So again, maraming salamat sa aming mga sponsors. To, to officially begin the uh, session, um, may I call on the Treasurer of the Administrative Management Committee, Ms. Melody Boreros, for the opening prayer. Let us pause for a while and remember that we are in God's loving presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our loving Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this learning session. We lift up to you, to you our resource speaker, and everyone here present. Help us engage in meaningful discussion and allow us to grow closer as a group. Fill us with your spirit and strengthen our commitment to the ministry you have entrusted to us. Constantly remind us that we do here today all the decisions that we make and all that we accomplish is for your pursuit of truth, for your greater glory, and for the love of academic community, especially the students whom you called us to serve. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, uh... The, uh, good morning again, and uh, good morning everyone. And um, just to let you know, um, the Administrative Management Committee has decided to more or less to certain practices that can be institutionalized and adopted by different CAP and CR schools. And so um, the, today's session is one of uh, one one one, uh, one uh, session where the session. I'm uh, Buckley. The session will focus on one um, practice which can be adopted by different schools and can be institutionalized. And this is the FlexBen program. We are also planning to do, uh, we, have, we have completed the pre-retirement template. We will have another, uh, we will have a webinar on this and how to implement. So that's another practice that can be institutionalized by the CAP and CR member schools. Now for today's session, we are fortunate to have with us Dr. Edna Pandikol Bopi Franco as our resource person. Uh, I, I must admit that uh, Dr. Franco or Bopi, as uh, she's fondly called, um, was known to me in uh, 2002. And I consider her to be an important uh, person in my career insofar as uh, HR work is concerned. I, I would consider her my mentor. Dr. Franco is Associate Professor in the Psychology Department of the Ateneo de Manila University and uh, Director for Special Projects at the Ateneo Center for Organization Research and Development for Ateneo Court. Aside from teaching, she has held um, leadership positions as VP for Administration and Planning, Assistant to the President for OD and Planning, Chair of the Psychology Department, and Executive Director of Ateneo Court. Prior to joining the academy, she practiced in the field of organization development and human resource management and development in various organizations locally and abroad. Among others, she was Vice President Human Resources and Vice President, Training and Development at the Philippine Airlines. 
Today, BOPIP is more active in the area of leadership for various groups and organizations, including the Society of Jesus. She is Program Director of the PhD in Leadership uh, Studies at the Ateneo. She has published a number of journal articles and books, with the latest one on Filipino leadership, stories, and science. She completed her AB Psychology at the University of the Philippines, master's degree in social psychology and PhD at the Ateneo Manila University. Friends and colleagues, let us all welcome Dr. Franco. Hello. <clears throat> Hello everyone, good morning and thank you Noel for that very gracious introduction. I uh, consider Noel to be one of my good friends, um, somebody who I spent many hours with uh, at the Miriam College and many happy memories. So uh, I am very grateful to say up for inviting me today and to be able to share in the good work that you're doing, especially at this time when we are all anxious and uh, trying to be safe and sane at the same time. So I will uh, begin my sharing uh, by first sharing my screen. Can you see my screen? <clears throat> are you able to see my screen? Hello? Yes, yes, yeah, we can see your screen. Thank okay. You. So, um, as Noel has already introduced, the topic for today is uh, flexing benefits, a disruptive scheme, okay? And as, as requested, these are the, this will be the coverage of my presentation. First, uh, an overview of flexible benefits, some gains and pains in uh, delivering the program, uh, key steps in designing flexible benefits, Although we will not have a tutorial uh, skill building, I will go through the, the key steps to be able to come up with this program and then share with you some uh, sample benefit, flexible benefits program from different perspectives. No? The perspective of uh, uh, a self-managed, uh, a program that was self-managed perspective of an employee who is enjoying flexible benefits and from the perspective of a service provider. So I just want to begin with a, a quick activity and Noel will help me with this, just so we have a, an icebreaker. Can I ask you uh, to share with us how you're feeling this morning by using uh, what we call the word cloud? So how do we do this? Uh, go to this website, uh, www.menti.com and enter the code 8199568. And we will get to see how people are feeling this morning as we begin the program. Are we okay, Noel? So please see on the screen the code. Okay, there, excited, blessed, all positive feelings, happy. So uh, in the word cloud, the bigger the word, the font, the more people are sharing that feeling. It's good to know people are excited. Good 
rejuvenated. Wow, that's nice. Refreshed. Sleepy. We have to wake up this person. Quite tired. Okay, that's understandable. It's the weekend. Okay, anxious, hopeful, ready to learn, enthusiastic, feeling great. Okay, so far we have happy, excited, and blessed as the most uh, common feelings. And grateful too. Uh, as I look at the list of participants, I see a lot of familiar names. So, so hello to all those whom I have met before and with whom I have a friendship with and happy to be, to meet uh, everyone else. Survived, that's an interesting feeling. Oh, somebody's feeling sick. We hope, I hope that the session will make you feel a little bit better. Okay, I still see people coming in. taking a picture of the screen. Just okay. That's also okay. I saw this poster once that said, it's okay to just be okay. Amazed. That's an interesting uh, feeling. Chilly, is it cold there? Is the temperature cold, Noel? Where I am, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, a few more seconds and then we can close the word count. So it's nice to see people are feeling blessed, excited, happy, and a lot of very positive feelings. So we have a good start for this morning. I hope those who are not feeling too well will feel a little bit more refreshed as the morning goes. Expectant, okay. Feeling fresh and smooth. Okay, are we okay? So just one more second and then we can close the word count. Thank you, Noel. All right. I'll stop sharing. Okay. Okay, can you see my screen again? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so, uh, what is flex ban? I think uh, that's a big question for this morning. And I'm sure it's not, sorry. I'm sure it's not a new term 
for most of you. It's really a, a program that goes beyond the one size fits all uh, traditional benefits program. In FlexBen, we allow employees to have choices on what they consider to be uh, relevant and important, sorry, benefits uh, that would respond to their specific needs. So this program uh, previously when it began was called a cafeteria plan, primarily because it offers choices to uh, employees who are part of the program. In recent years, FlexBen has become a very popular HR practice, primarily because it is evidenced to be a key factor in attracting, retaining, and engaging talents, which uh, many organizations are um, set as an objective in their human resource programs. So I just, I just picked up uh, some of the uh, materials that have been uh, published about FlexBen, and it shows us why FlexBen has become quite popular. So uh, most of the time, uh, organizations who use FlexBen experience the positive benefit of attracting uh, talents. When people consider uh, where to go for a, for a new employment, they don't only look at compensation anymore, but they look at the kind of benefits that an organization offers. So according to this, the, the main service providers of FlexBand, what really is key in why FlexBand is uh, popular is because of the choice that it offers, the flexibility, the feeling of empowerment because employees get to choose what is important to them, as well as the relevance of these benefits. I, I remember when I was just starting in my career in the 70s, and one of the things that the government had um, decided to mandate was to provide employees with a sack of rice every month. So I was uh, single, I was living with my family, and every month I would have a problem with what to do with a sack of rice that I, that I got as benefit. Uh, it, it became problematic because I didn't really, I didn't really know what to do with it until one of my co-employees offered to buy my sack of rice every month. Okay. So when, when FlexBen became popular, I realized, okay, I could have traded that sack of rice for something else if we had FlexBen in our organization. So choice, flexibility, and relevance are the key points of why FlexBen is a, is uh, provides advantage to employees. But um, FlexBen, although it is very attractive, uh, also has some downsides you know, as far as employers are concerned or organizations are concerned. Well, on the, on the screen, you will see on the left side, on my left side, the benefits of uh, FlexBen some of which I have already mentioned. It, it recognizes the diverse needs of the workforce, uh, promotes appreciation of benefits, attracts and retains, um, helps organization be competitive and uh, retaining employees because employees feel engaged. But for organizations, sometimes uh, depending on how they structure the program, some organizations might consider it too costly to implement or too complex to administer, or it may be not in line with the company's benefits philosophy, which we will talk about a little bit uh, in a little while. So I just thought this, uh, I found this 
um, HBR article, which I thought was very, very relevant today, how uh, the pandemic, the present situation, calls for us to be really more responsive and more flexible. And uh, as, as you will see from some of the things that I will share, the pandemic has also changed the, the perspective of employees towards benefits. And I'm sure many of you are already seeing that in your, or in your institutions. No? So I just also wanted to highlight one of the headlines here uh, locally where our Dole um, secretary urge, urges uh, organizations to adopt flexi work. And among others, this is one of the flexibilities that, are, that uh, we are called, for, called to do these days. Okay, so I picked this up from the uh, program that was sent to me from SEAP, and I think it's very, um, very key to what we will be talking about today. Organizations are expected to be responsive um, at any given time and situation, but especially today in the pandemic, we are uh, asked to be even more flexible and even more responsive and be more aware of the needs of our employees. And as academic institutions, we have to deal with a more relevant, to deal with the demands for a more relevant and responsive benefit scheme. Okay, so let's do another quick uh, word cloud survey uh, since we, talk about being responsive and being sensitive to the needs of our employees. Can we do a quick survey? What do you think are the top three needs of your employees today? So we'll do another word cloud, Noel. Noel, we have our uh, word cloud screen. There you go. Let's see if we're able to uh, do a, a quick checklist of what your employees are needing at this time. You can enter up to three. Definitely a lot of compassion needed. Mental health, flexible work hours. Health checks. Financial assistance, yes. Compassion can take the form of uh, many ways, right? Health card. So it seems that financial assistance is one of the top needs right now. Compassion and understanding, of course. In terms of benefits, 
what do you think are they looking for? Yeah, well, financials, of course. Financial security, subsidy for extra device, I see that. Spiritual support. HMO. Gadgets. <laughs> Providing load for internet. Yeah, online, online gadgets or anything that helps the ability to access since all of our meetings today are done online. Health checks, HMO, internet subsidy, a higher salary, of course, financials, hazard pay. Emotional support, computer, laptop assistance. Okay, I'll give you a few more seconds. I think it, um, the fact that compassion is one of the most identified need of our employees. A program like Flexible Benefits um, makes us more responsive to specific needs that our employees are, are facing today. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, thank you, Noel. I will proceed with my presentation now. Okay, so um, according to a service provider, who's one of my good friends, their experience uh, during the pandemic has been a, a bit of a shift from what employees normally avail of uh, among their clients for FlexBen. And these are what they have noticed as the most selected options by employees. As you know, uh, in a flexible benefits, we offer what we call a marketplace. And that's where the employees are able to trade uh, whatever points they have into uh, specific items. No? And these are the most selected options according to them. So lately, uh, most of the time, employees select groceries um, from the marketplace. And as you uh, identified also in your list, digital items, gadgets, online tools, uh, loads, whatever uh, helps them, perhaps cameras, small cameras, um, Wi-Fi, portable Wi-Fi. And then uh, in, in, in lieu of cash, so GCs, vouchers, and I think this responds to what you were saying earlier about need for more um, financial finances. Um, this, the last two I thought were quite interesting. Some of, many of the employees also avail of health and wellness programs. Of course, uh, HMO medical benefits, expanding what they can usually uh, avail of. And then uh, mental health programs such as online classes, self-care, art, yoga, cooking, gardening, anything that helps ease the anxiety of the pandemic. And a number of employees also go for uh, learning and development programs 
And uh, this is part of the upskilling requirements uh, that employees experience today. So I'm wondering uh, if you can identify or if you can relate to this list and think about whether your employees would also um, select these options uh, given the needs of the times. So you might want to think about this as we move forward to the designing of your uh, flex ban. So uh, one thing that was also interesting uh, shared by, by uh, my friend was that typically um, employees are more willing now to give up their vacation leaves because the vacation leaves used to be uh, occasions to spend time with the family. But because of the work from home setup, they have a lot of time with their family now. So that's no longer um, that's no longer a need, but perhaps the, the quality of the time that they spend with their families is is another matter. Okay, so if we think if if we believe that the flexible benefits program is is the way to go, uh, here are some uh, some guidelines and how to design the flexible benefits program. So perhaps to, to think about uh, first, the fact that in designing a flexible benefits program, there are actually two stakeholders. The first set of stakeholders would be you as the institution. And some of the considerations would be first, uh, what will it cost? What will it cost the institution to provide a flex band program? Uh, is it affordable? Okay. And then what is the match between your company direction, the profile of your employees, and the offerings that you might make in, a, in what we call a flex band marketplace? Some organizations are concerned about what is the return on investment? If we do a flex band program, do we really get what is promised in terms of attraction and retaining and engagement of employees? And uh, another concern would be if we were to do this on an outsourced basis, who would be the provider that we can uh, rely on to be able to uh, ensure that the program works for us. Okay. The second stakeholder, of course, would be your individual employees. And the concerns of the individual employees would center on the relevance of the products and the items. I mean, when you do a flex band program, it's, of course, because you want to respond to the needs of the employee. So relevance to them would be critical the range or variety of choice, uh, what, what can they really uh, select? Is there, are there a lot of options? And then the simplicity of the system. Sometimes the flex band programs can be so complicated. So it's important that the employees are able to do this quickly without too much bureaucratic uh, processes. And uh, the price, no? how much can be purchased by their flex points? The flex point would be the equivalent of the conversion of uh, their traditional benefits. So looking at those two stakeholders, we begin with number one, what is your benefits philosophy? Okay. Why do you want to do this? What is your goal? Uh, is it still to attract and retain talent, to engage our employees, or to support a decent life, or at this time in the pandemic especially, to, be, to exercise what is most needed, which is compassion and understanding um, towards our employees. No? And the second concern would be, uh, how much is this going to cost you? 
is it going to be an additional burden to the institution? Is it something that you can work with? And are you willing to, to pay for it, even if it costs a little bit more? So uh, insights from the Asia Pacific Benefit Trend Survey shows that um, very, very key in designing a FlexBen scheme is the clarity of your goal and your objective. Now, why do you want to do this? It's not just a one-time thing, but something that has to do also with what your philosophy is towards human resources. Okay, number two, the uh, most important part in the FlexBen program is of course the assessment of the needs. No? Uh, one of the biggest concerns or problems with the FlexBen program is if it does not respond to what the employees uh, are needing, especially at this time. So here you have uh, uh, categories of, of possi possible options has to do with home life, self-care, uh, convenience today uh, in our online platforms. Well, travel uh, probably is an X now uh, since we're not allowed to move around. And of course, connectivity is a very key uh, factor today. Okay, so you're familiar with this, I'm sure. No? When we talk about needs and preferences of employees, we usually look at them in terms of generations. And I don't know how um, relevant this is for us today. Maybe we can do a quick uh, survey here. Can you find yourselves among these cohorts? Where would, where would our participants be today? Are we mostly Baby boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, or Gen Z? What do you think, Noel? Where would our participants here be? Um, I'd say Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z. Really? Yeah. Participants in today's webinar? Yes, in today's webinar. <laughs> okay. So uh, can we relate to this? Are we really more entrepreneurial and we value good work-life balance? Um, through digital natives uh, and independent. And so we can also take, think about uh, uh, the employees that we have in our institutions. No? Where would they be in these categories? So given that uh, many studies have shown the differentiation of needs and preferences uh, among the multi-generational workforce, maybe we can take a look at this uh, list. And if we have um, more of Gen X, millennials, and Gen Z, we see a lot of emphasis on health and wellness. But of course, given the pandemic, that's also uh, uh, where most people are today. Okay. And financial assistance, healthcare, and skills development. Okay. I, in my own experience, I noticed that the Gen Z and the millennials are really very hungry for, for new knowledge. No? And they're very good at also at pursuing new knowledge. So perhaps, the list that I showed you earlier, where um, according to our, to my friend who's a service provider, the, the option for upskilling and also other um, mental health programs is a very critical these days and perhaps a very good point to look at. So the, the point here is that when we are developing the, the FlexBand program, we are aware, keenly aware of what the preferences, the differences uh, among the 
multi-generations would be. Of course, we probably identify um, some commonalities today, which is what you shared earlier, uh, financial assistance, healthcare, and um, mental wellness. So once we have identified our uh, main philosophy, as well as our the, the possible needs of our employees, then we put the put this all together and design the benefit scheme. Uh, in this uh, at this stage, it is usually recommended that you put together a team who will uh, analyze uh, your company budget. What is your present benefits uh, budget? Okay, how much of this would be mandated by the government? And how much of the budget can you really flex? And then consider what are the employee needs or preferences? How would you, uh, how can you translate what you are able to, to flex into uh, options, your cafeteria plan for your employees? And then you need to determine what would be the availment process? How much technology do you want uh, in, in this program? Are you going to outsource or are you going to self-manage? Okay. Later on, I, can sh I will share with you the uh, program, uh, which of course, uh, Noel knows very well, which is a program that was self-managed. So this would probably be the phase where you take uh, a lot of time and you need to really consider how you will put together all the information that you have gathered. Once you have uh, designed your flex ban and you have determined whether this is going to be uh, delivered on um, self-managed or, or you will um, consult with an external provider. A very important part, again, would be the test and communication of the program. This is a change management program. So you're shifting from uh, traditional benefits to uh, a system where employees have a choice, but they also need to understand fully what is required of them, uh, how they will avail, and um, how much they are entitled to, depending on the levels, the level that they have that they're in in the organization. So any change management, of course, uh, is a critical point, and the success of the organization depends on how well you're able to uh, manage this step. Okay, so the, the next step, uh, which is very key, would be the review and evaluation. And uh, this is a fourth and fifth state, uh, step, actually. You need to get your employee feedback uh, constantly, uh, constant communication, uh, get employee suggestions, um, and to ensure that the program is indeed relevant and that it is responding to the needs, okay? And then you perform your analytics. How well is the program uh, being used? What is the availment level? What is the satisfaction level of your uh, <coughs> employees? And whether your original intent, which is to help the employees, is being met. So just a quick summary. If you're designing a flex band scheme, you need to identify your goal, be very clear about why you're doing it. Um, ensure that you know your demographics, how much uh, budget you really have. Are you going to have a differentiation by rank and roles, uh, different benefits per level? Um, conduct the assessment, design the benefit scheme, 
test and communicate, and review and evaluate. Okay, the review and evaluation is also very important because it tells you, uh, going back to your original intent, whether you are meeting the objective that you had set for this program. So just wanted to share with you um, the designing of the benefit scheme, if you were to do it with an external provider, would be quite similar, except for the um, part where you are partnering with benefits and providers, and um, perhaps a, a more complicated platform if it is externally provided. Okay, so I just wanted to share with you some uh, sample FlexBand programs, as I said, from three perspectives. First, uh, sample case studies from a provider, that's Storm Consulting. And uh, here are some of the cases or case, uh, cases that they uh, shared with me. Okay, so case study one, uh, FlexBand, Converting, uh, this is for a millennial employees, converting unused health benefits into points. So here, what they, what they experienced was that the employees did not find their health benefits to be uh, very important at this time. So they were able to, uh, provide options for hotel entertainment uh, travel for employees. No? This is probably uh, pre-pandemic, but it shows you the, the need to be clear about what the preference of a certain cohort would be. So uh, on another case, uh, another institution, was more concerned with uh, giving a platform for prioritizing health and wellness. So vacation leaves would, were converted into bigger uh, budget for health and uh, employees opted to have their dependents also enrolled in their uh, health HMO program. So for case study three, this is for one of the biggest fast food chain. And here, what, what the goal was, was to standardize benefits across all business units. So they had uh, different groups that, had, that, that were put together and had different benefit systems. So one way to to standardize was to offer a flex band program so that uh, it didn't matter which organization they belong to, they still had the same set of benefits. So uh, another perspective of flex band, this is an interview with an employee who is enjoying a flex band. So, he described their FlexBand program as something that was very simple. Every quarter, they are given points, flex points, and uh, all they have to do is to reimburse, uh, process through reimbursement. So every quarter, I have an allocated maximum amount for reimbursement. If I don't reimburse for the quarter, I have until the end of the calendar year. So it's a very open system. I submit receipts related to groceries, tuition, pet care, utilities, electronics, uh, gadgets, education, home, medical, and personal care. So their cafeteria plan is quite wide. No? And the good thing about this is it's a simple reimburse, reimbursement scheme. So I asked him, uh, did it change during the pandemic? And he said, no, it was business as usual. And I like FlexBand because 
I can use my benefits to finance my current needs. So in a way, the flex points are like additional cash that can be used for whatever is up a need at the present time. So for example, he says, my pet got hospitalized and I used the benefits for his hospitalization. And on other occasions, it was for the tuition. Okay. So since it's a reimbursement uh, program, it's, very, it's really quite flexible. So, uh, so I also ask, is there uh, differentiation in levels? Yes, there is a maximum amount reimbursable every quarter, but it does not restrict you to any one category. You can use it in any of the categories. And if I don't use it in any special purchases, I just continue to use it for my normal grocery bill. So one of the things uh, you also need to decide on, which is probably also decided by your HR philosophies, your differentiation uh, in coverage depending on the job level. So uh, in closing, this uh, employee says, I would say that my comments represent majority of the employee sentiments, that people appreciate the flex bend system. Of course, there will always be employees who would prefer getting the normal, the amount via normal payroll without having to reimburse. But the problem with the reimbursement process, uh, the, the, the advantage of the reimbursement process is the taxation. If it's normal payroll, then it gets taxed uh, as a normal um, salary. Okay. But some people do not like the reimbursement process because it's just an additional step. But that seems to be a minority in the company of this particular person. Finally, I'd like to share with you uh, one program that I was quite familiar with and uh, I think has been very successful. This, was, this is for Miriam College and Noel can supplement the information later on implemented in 2009 and self-managed, open to all permanent administrators, faculty, teaching, non-teaching, and non-permanent faculty after they have completed their second year of full-time teaching. And uh, since it was a choice, 70% of the total eligible employees subscribe to the FlexBend program. This is also a, a good thing. I mean, the FlexBend program is, uh, is optional. If people want to stick to the traditional benefits, they can still do that. So the FlexBend program of Miriam College allows employees to design their own benefit plan based on their needs. And the plan is quite simple. Um, leave credits are converted or monetized so that they can buy benefits from the menu or what I call the marketplace. So here's an example of the flex. So sick leaves, uh, if you have 11 sick leaves, there are of course uh, leaves that, are, that have to be kept, no? mandatory. So out of the 11, you flex five. Uh, for a multi-purpose leave or emergency leaves or whatever you call it, you also keep a um, mandatory number and flex a part of it. And vacation leaves, you keep a mandatory number of 10 and flex 10. Okay? So here you have a total of 20 flex points. And... Um, the flex budget is determined by how many flex points you have. And it depends on the daily rate of the person and the number of leaves. So for example, if your daily rate is 2000 pesos times 20 days, then your flex band budget is 40,000. Okay. And that 40,000 pesos can be spent on health insurance for your dependents tuition fees, pag-ibig, medicine, reimbursement, travel, training allowance. Okay. 
So it's like a, a cafeteria where employees can choose where their 40,000 can go. Okay, well, memorial plan. I don't know how, much, how many of the employees availed of that, Noel. Okay, and investments. Noel can talk a little bit more about the investments if you are interested. So um, I guess in summary, why FlexBan? The, the key word here is the word flexible. And uh, I guess the reason why SayUp has uh, decided to have a session on this is because it's really at this time where our institutions are called to care for and to be responsive to the needs of our employees. And FlexBan is one of the ways we can do it without uh, without incurring uh, too much additional costs for our institutions. It just requires a little bit of creativity uh, to put together a cafeteria plan. So FlexBan allows employees to have choice and to align it to their needs, especially at this time. Employees feel empowered with choice. And once they make the choice, then it becomes meaningful for them. Availment of benefits are high and optimized if they are uh, relevant. And the participation of employees generate positive sentiments because they feel that uh, the institution is being responsive to them. You know? Especially at this time when they, there's a higher need for healthcare and for financial assistance, uh, FlexBan allows you to provide this to the employees without uh, too much impact on your budget. So uh, with all the good things of FlexBan, there are also some possible uh, reasons why it may not work. It can be simple and effective, but there are some key pitfalls, no? So if your plan has too much choice, uh, then you might, lack uh, it might lack focus so it's good to really know what are the priorities because you will also be uh, making uh, connections with the providers no so if you are uh, spread out too thinly then you might have a, a problem putting a good benefits plan together uh, sometimes it fails because your design it's not responsive to the employee needs. You might be going too much with the marketing benchmarking, uh, if, especially if you have a, an external provider who will tell you what, uh, what items to put in the marketplace. Um, programs also fail if there's no regular review and no communication strategy. As I said earlier, communication and the change management Phase is very important, and that the system is too complicated. You know, uh, sometimes, especially with external providers, the system of availment can be uh, very complex, so, and employees will not avail of it. Sometimes, also, and this was a feedback given to me: if you have a marketplace, uh, you have to make sure that the the price of the items in your marketplace is competitive with what they can buy outside. No? So um, th this is why the reimbursement scheme is also very uh, helpful because the employee decides where to get the items and the, the, through the reimbursement, he just gets back the equivalent of the flex points. So that's all uh, I have for the presentation and uh, I thank you for this. If you have any comments, questions, I don't know what what we have, um, uh, what how much time we have for that, but we'll open the floor. Uh, both, but Dr. Franco, we, we just explained that uh, somebody will explain about the evaluation and then we move to the open forum. Okay, but right. I just close my presentations by saying that for health and safety protocols, there is no flexibility, okay? We have to see the protocols. So thank stay you. safe, everyone.
And I will stop my uh, screen share. Good morning, everyone. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you from our bot from the bottom of our hearts, Dr. Franco, for that very fruitful sharing, uh, which will be very beneficial to all of us. For us to get our certificate of participation and qualify for the raffle, we need to fill out the online evaluation form. You can find the link in the chat box or scan the QR code seen on screen or type in your browser the given link. Please do not forget to submit the form. After this, just wait for your certificate, which will be sent to your email. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I, I think we can now proceed to the open forum, Dr. Franco, but uh, this will be moderated by Ms. Loida Hermo. Good morning once again. So at this point, we would like to open the floor for your questions. So, uh, sir, how do we get the questions? We will just be using the chat box. Yeah, yes, that they can, uh, they can uh, ask their questions through the chat box. Can we, can I access? Okay. So you can now begin your questions. And there is a question, Loida, in, in the chat box from Shena College. I cannot see it, sir. I thought. Yeah. So the question is, does FlexBen subscribe to employee lending cooperative or foundation to ease the load po put on the employer? Um, I wonder if, uh, if I'm understanding this question correctly. Is it saying, will, is it possible to have in the marketplace, I call it the marketplace no, or the menu, um, employee lending cooperative. Um, my own opinion on that is probably not, okay, because that would be um, complicated or a complex relationship. No, I mean, the, if, if, the, if you have an employee cooperative scheme already in the institution, then the employee can avail of that separately from the flex band. I think it is a it's it's a different kind of of benefit, no? Uh, did I answer that question? Uh, are you saying that the or are you also saying that? The flex band is channeled through the cooperative or foundation. Um, Sister Marivelle, uh, or who is that who asked the question from Lourdes School? I'm just not clear on whether I understood the question. Okay, there was a response here, Po. Yes, Po, in some ways. Okay, meaning that the flex band is channeled through the uh, cooperative. Okay, I, I probably would not encourage that. I would much uh, recommend that the FlexBend scheme is still part of human resources department um, program. And uh, it doesn't really 
put much burden to the institution, especially if you're able to uh, design your benefit scheme uh, still within the, the benefits budget that you already have. It's just a matter of converting what would normally be availed of uh, as a traditional benefit into something that the employees can, can flex. No? Like for example, the vacation leaves or sick leaves or emergency leaves that you are normally giving out to the employees anyway. Or some other benefits that, like in my case, the sack of rice that I didn't really need, no? that can be converted in terms of amount to something else. Okay, so another question we have, how much do Flexben outside providers usually charge for, for their services? Um, in my, my experience, uh, the providers that I am aware of, they do not charge for the services, okay? They might charge you, they might charge an initial um, commitment fee from the organization because they will help design the program. But what they would, what they benefit from is the uh, availment of the products, no? So they don't really make money on the, on the services, but they will probably charge you. I know uh, initially they charge, one of the providers that I have was charging like 10% of what the budget would be. So uh, the, the external providers do not necessarily charge you for the program itself. As I said, probably the initial designing of the program. And then after that, it's really, uh, they benefit from the connections that they have with the providers. For example, if it's a healthcare HMO, then that's where they would uh, benefit from. Okay, other questions? So may we know if you still have other questions? <laughs> I hope the presentation was clear enough. So no questions. And if you have any questions on the Miriam College program, Noel will be happy to, to answer. Okay, so I think, sir, there are no more questions. So we can proceed to the next part, sir. Yes, yes, Ms. Loida. Okay, so at this point, we would like to thank our speaker for this very enlightening session. So as our way of appreciation, allow me to read the content of the certificate. The Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines National Capital Region awards the Certificate of Appreciation and Gratitude to Dr. Edna P. Franco in grateful recognition of her invaluable contribution and services as a resource speaker during the SEAP NCR 2021 General Assembly Learning Session 7. Administrative Services Committee entitled Flexing Compensation and Benefits, a Disrupted Scheme, given this eighth day of, 18th day of September 2021. Signed, Mr. Jose Ramel E. Javier, Chair SEAP NCR 2021 General Assembly, and Father Nolan A. K., PhD, Regional Trustee SEAP NCR. Dr. Franco, thank you very much for this wonderful session. So let us all give our virtual clap to Dr. Um, Dr. Franco.
Thank you, Dr. Franco. Can you just stay on the screen? Uh, because this is the time for uh, our participants to do selfie with a resource person, and then you will qualify for our raffle draw. You can win up to one million prayers via GCash. Okay? So I'll count one to five, and then let's begin the selfie. One, two, three, four, five. Selfie time. Thank you. Bye-bye. I shall exit now. Thank you. All right. So uh, we move now to... Uh, do we have the raffle draw? Oh, let's have a closing prayer. Okay. So, Miss Charina. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Spirit of God rests upon me. The Spirit of God Recording consecrates stopped. me. The Spirit of God bids me go forth to proclaim God's peace and joy. The Spirit of God sent me forth, called to witness the Kingdom of God among all nations called to proclaim the good news of God to the poor, called to console the hearts overcome with great sorrow, called to comfort the poor who mourn and who weep, called to announce the grace of salvation to all, called to reveal the glory among all people. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Okay. So, are we ready with uh, our raffle? Otherwise, Otherwise, oh, there you go. All right. All right. Oh, oh, eh, ano na to? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> yung raffle, raffle draw. Oh. Well, in the meantime, uh, let me remind you of the mass this afternoon uh, to be uh, presided by uh, Reverend Father Nolan K. It will be uh, it will be at 4 p.m. Am I correct, uh, Secretariat? It, it's going to be 4 p.m. So we need more time to uh, more time to, for for the raffle draw. But uh, as we yeah here here's the poster. Okay, so yeah at 4 p.m. today it's going to be uh, uh, presided by. Uh, Father Nolan K. Okay, and you have the Zoom link. And of course, we continue to pray. We continue to pray for the recovery of uh, uh, Cardinal uh, Advincula. He is uh, all over the news. He contracted the virus. So we pray for 
for him in a very special way. Okay, so while waiting, as mentioned by Dr. Franco, those who might be interested to just to explore the possibility of uh, shifting or offering a flex pen program to your employees, uh, we are more than happy to help you. It's not as difficult as you think. Uh, there are many ways of doing it. Miriam College, uh, had, we had to develop our own system through our IIT, IT uh, department. So um, in the absence of a system, a manual procedure can also be done. So you just start with the, uh, a small scale and then uh, you know, do a pilot run. So there you go. Magpasa nga muna tayo, baka may mga pa-shout out kayo. Okay, so ulitin ko ulit, closing Eucharistic celebration at 4 p.m. today. Uh, presider is Father Nolan Ke. All right, so uh, shout out. Wala ba tayo niyang pa-shout out muna? Okay, wala. Thank you, thank you, Sister Christine. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay, shout out. Sa, sa idol naming si Dr. <laughs> Mabuhay. Ay, eto na ang Lore, ro, Roleta ng Kapalaran. We will have uh, how many winners? Joan, how many winners? Okay, bahala na, bahala na si Batman. All right. The first winner. Da -da -da -da. From the same parents of Kalini Pass, I see a lot of Bourbon. Mr. Bourbon, ikaw ay nagwagi ng tama ba ko? Isang libo. Isang libo, isang tuwa, buong bansa. Eat ulaga. Alright. Mamaya 12 o'clock. Sa winner ng pato, o oh, may dagdag pa. Diba? Ay, pre, so, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Borbon. Nagkamali ang DTI, 500 pesos lang pala. Ulitin ko, 500 pesos. Kaya ayaw ko magabono ngayon. The second winner from Immaculate Heart of Mary College, Sister Rosa Galon SFSC. Muli, 500 GCAS, GCAS na. Oh. Okay, so we will have five winners. Nakita ko si Sister kanina, nasa Facebook uh, page natin. Kala mo naman, nakikita ko siya. Wow, from Manila Cathedral School, we have Jaren Kaluwag. Jaren Kaluwag, you won 500 pesos and 500 prayers will be uh, deposited to your, transmitted to your Gcash account. All right. Okay. So, nakakatatlo na tayo. We have two more. All right? Okay. From Virgin Del Pilar School. Ako, swerte ngayon ng mga madre. Sister Maribel Monteveros. Sister Monteveros, you won 500 pesos and a million in prayers. So the Secretariat will communicate with you so that you can get your uh, Gcash, uh, your, your 500 pesos. So fourth, and now we have, uh, this is the last. This is the last. Oh, from San Beda College, Alabang, Raquel Espino. Muli, Raquel, nanalo ka ng 500 Pesos mula sa puso ng CEAP and CR. Okay. Alright. O, oh, ano na ang susunod? Ano yan? Okay. I, I think we've, uh, we're, we're kind of early, but uh, to all the participants, we would like to thank you for taking your time to be with us uh, in today's session. Flexing benefits a disruptive scheme. 
And um, I think it is um, it is incumbent upon school management to really navigate, to help navigate with employees this in, during this difficult time. And uh, our committee provided an option which you may want to uh, explore. So marami pong salamat and uh, let's continue to pray for one another. Stay safe, mabuhay, and as usual, this has been your host, Noel. Marami pong salamat. Okay. Thank you.